What's up, Barnstormers fans? Coach Wilkes here. This is our first episode of Barnstormer with Coach Wilkinson, and I'm really excited to bring this to you. We're going to have a guest today, Darius Jane Peterson. But first, I want to introduce and bring in our co-host, our awesome kicker, uh, Gabriel Rui. Young Rui is in the house here with us as our co-host. What's up, Rui? I'm much, Coach. How are you doing? I am doing well. This is our first podcast, our first episode uh, being filmed here to, to be premiered later this week. So tell me a little bit about before we get into what it's all about, what kind of our vision is, what are you excited about by doing this? Uh, like uh, we had talked about previously, me and you, just letting everybody know there are certain things throughout the episodes we're going to be doing, inside scoops, uh, things that people just don't see. Uh, not all of it, obviously, but just a vast majority of it because, like, you know, they don't know what goes on. They just see us either Friday, Saturday, or Sunday, whatever day we play, and that's really it, as it should be. But, um. But yeah, I'm kind of excited for everybody to learn a little bit more about everybody on the team. Yeah, definitely. So it's going to be very player focused for us. It's going to give people insight into what your guys' lives are like from Sunday until Friday. It's a little bit different than what some of you guys do and get to know a little bit more about who you are as a person, not just as a player, right? Uh, just a little bit of information. People are probably wondering why, why is Rui our co-host? You know, what the heck? We have all the other guys. Uh what what was your what did you your major at the University of Kansas? What was it? Journalism. Journalism, broadcast journalism. So Rui has has his education from the University of Kansas in, in this aspect. So he knows a lot more than I do about how to do this, which is why we brought <laughs> him on. Uh, we're, we also had some questions, so we dropped that teaser the other day. Uh, so we have some questions we're going to get to uh, throughout the the episode here. Some questions for Darius. Some questions that Rui and I can just answer. And then we just want to be able to go behind the scenes. So we'll have a couple different segments. We'll always have a little interview segment. Uh, like today, it's Darius James Peterson. But we'll also – I'm going to do a little breakdown segment. Uh, this week's going to be a little bit about somebody asking about our running game. So we're going to do a little breakdown about our run game and, you know, where we attack and stuff like that. Uh, there was a question about, about that on, on the Facebook stream. And then Rui's going to have a segment every episode. It's going to be called Rui in the Community. So we'll get into that a little bit later on, but you'll, you'll see Rui at different partners of ours or different parts of the greater Des Moines area. You know, maybe if you're in the right place at the right time, you could also get on the podcast, but you know, maybe we'll be remote from, you know, Pat Reynolds duck hunting season or something along those lines, but you know, we'll, we'll be doing a lot, a lot of cool stuff, but all right, without further ado, let's bring on our first guest episode one of Barnstorming. Our returning quarterback for 2023 was with us last year, Darius James Peterson. Darius, what's up? Hey, what's going on? It, not much. It is a Super Bowl hangover. Should have been a national holiday because everybody was out partying and watching the game. But we are happy to have you here for the first episode of Barnstorming with me and Rui. So let's uh, kind of get rolling, man. Where, where are you at? Where are you at right now? In California? Yeah, in Navarro, California. Nav Navarro, California. What are you doing with your time in the off season? How's that? Been? How's that gone? It's going good. You know, um, you know, training every day, getting ready for this next season coming up. What kind of training have you been doing? Throwing every day, speed training, uh, weight training. I mean, all of the above. Um, just staying active and uh, just getting mentally dialed in for this next season. Excellent. So you've done a little bit of <clears throat> training in California, but you've also done some training in Idaho this offseason. So what what spurred you going to two different places to train? Yeah, um, got a trainer up in Idaho that I've uh, utilized for the past couple of years. Um, he knows a lot when it comes to different things, when it's speed and strength uh, training. Um, he trains a lot of professional athletes. And so um, I was spent about a whole month up there in November, um, training with him and doing some hunting as well and some fishing um, and just having a good time up there. Um, yeah, had a great time and um, yeah. Awesome. So people know that when you get, you know, you don't, you don't live here throughout the whole year. You're in California, you're in Idaho, everywhere in between. When you come to Des Moines, you'll be here in a few weeks for the season. You roommate with Rui. So, Rui, tell us a little bit about what it's like to be roommates with Darius. <laughs> what are the good – what's the good uh, – Oh, uh, there's no bad to it, man. He's a great guy. Um, the good thing 
we're we're a lot we're a lot alike and a lot of uh, we have a lot of similarities. Um, it was easy to get along with him from the jump. Um, I think the one thing maybe the bad was probably when he went to some like convention downtown and got like a duck call because he left all of his other ones back home and he brought it back. So he was calling ducks nonstop here. Uh, I don't know how many came. I don't think any. If you can, you want to ask him, but um, no, that was probably. But you know, you just kind of get immune to it. But no, he's a great guy. Um, I do, I do want to ask him one thing though. Um, with obviously you resigning all of that, going into the off season, what was like one of the things uh, that you wanted to work on like the most that you knew that you needed to get better from like last season? What was one thing that you felt like? Yeah, definitely my throwing mechanics. Um, that was a big focus this off season. Um, you know, tightening up the whole form, um, stride length, um, and quicker release as well. Um, and I think I've I've done that. Is a quicker release? Does it just more fast paced game? Absolutely, uh, it'll help yeah. out tremendously. Coach, you got anything? So- Kind of segue that into 2023. You've, you've done all this training. You didn't do it just just for the heck of it. So, what are some goals you have personally, outside of team goals for the 2023 season? Yeah, personally, um, my biggest goal would be to get league MVP this year. Um, but an even bigger goal of mine is to lead this team to the United Bowl. Nice. I mean that that's what what our what our our goals are. And, you know, we start the season in Vegas, our season openers in Vegas. And the awesome part, you know, talking to Julie when our schedule came out, our, our GM, Julie Pettit, how awesome would it be to start and end our season in Vegas? So start there for the first regular season game. If we go all the way to the championship, we play in Vegas for that. So we, you know, we have the opportunity, one of only two teams, us and Vegas, have the opportunity to start and finish our, our season in Vegas. It would be an awesome story if it was us versus Vegas in the championship game. Uh, so what, one thing that we have is we brought a, a pretty good core of guys back from last year's team, which is not always the case at this level because, you know, guys are looking for better opportunities in the CFL or the XFL, and obviously the NFL, and, and guys get those opportunities and some guys decide to, to move on and, and chase the rest of their life. But we've been able to bring back a, a solid core of guys, especially defensively and really with, with the special teams aspect. How do you think – how important do you think that is, Darius, to our potential success for 2023? Yeah, I think it's huge. You know, last year we had 16 rookies going into our first game, and um, having everybody as a bunch of vets this year um, is going to be, you know, super helpful when we get into those scenarios against, you know, those tougher teams and, um, you know, staying cool in those situations and knowing where we, we've been there before, you know, and, you um, I think having a bunch of vets on the team is going to be very contributing to our success. Gotcha. Rui, you're, you're going to, going to be year three barnstormer, you know, one of the most senior, you know, I think you'll be the most senior guy, uh, you know, Ken Trez moved on to San Diego. So you'll be the most senior bartender, bar, bartender. <laughs> That's, that was a Freudian slip with Rui, the most senior barnstormer on the squad what are your thoughts on spelling out what Darius says on, on us having that amount of returning guys coming back? Uh, I hit it on the, uh, on the head for sure with that. Um, last year, beginning of the year was tough. We saw it when we played up in Quad City. Uh, I mean, they came to us, I think, maybe a month later, and we beat them by like 20, 30 at home. Um, it was just a bunch of – like I talked to him about the game is way fast-paced, and no one really re- uh, realized that until it actually happened. Um, also went down, didn't have a running back after the, I think, what was the second drive of the game. Uh, didn't help us out any there. But uh, the lights definitely got bright at the beginning of the season for some of the guys. After that first game, we won a couple. Then we went up to math and then played a better team, lost there. But um, I'm excited, like he said, just everybody's going to be coming in now. Um, more experienced, um, including himself, um, everybody. It, it's still, I mean, yeah, I'm like the most, uh, what, third year I got ET and everybody else a little bit in the league a bit longer, but uh, still getting accustomed to the league and just general. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, uh, I'm, I'm excited for it for sure. Nice. So, I mean, you make a good point. Our, our season opener last year, we Antonio Wimbush was our running back. 
grabbed the starting running back job out of camp and then got hurt and missed, you know, I think five games last year. Recently re-signed, coming back. Uh, Darius, talk a little bit about what Antonio means to our team from your perspective and how big of a signing to have him come back. Uh, understanding that he had, you know, he was in the XFL draft. You were also in the XFL draft. He had some other teams talking to him. He had numerous other IFL teams talking to him. And, and I know you did as well, but speak to what how important that is for us to have him on the offensive side of the ball. Yeah, it's huge. I mean, his play speaks for itself. Um, he is a impact player and um, really gets this offense going when it comes to the run game. Um, you know, he's a great guy and love having him out there. Um, he understands what's going on uh, all the time when it comes to our play system and um, how the defense kind of moves around and how he can fit into those holes. Um, he is a key, key aspect to our offense for this next season. Um, okay, so with that, uh, obviously Bubba being back fully healthy, hopefully for the full season, uh, upcoming season, um, we have some new additions on the offensive, offensive side of the ball. What is one that you stood out to you? I mean, obviously, uh, they're all going to help in their own uh, in their own way, but which one is one that you're really looking forward to having over there with you? Man, we, we have ballers all the way around. We have athletes everywhere, and I'm just excited to get the ball out to them and let them score some touchdowns this year. Um, you know, we got some new – um, fresh bases when it comes to rookies this year. And each of them has a different skill set. And I think we are going to be able to utilize each and every single one of them um, in different areas of our game and our playbook and really, you know, um, tear defenses apart with all of the athletes that we have. Yeah, I think we, we yeah. made it a point to – Go out and sign some some high quality athletes and bring more speed. We have a lot of speed. We got a bunch of four three guys on offense. So hopefully that transitions. You know they'll all be rookies. A lot of these new guys are rookies. So we know that there's a transition period with that uh, for sure. So Darius, tell tell us you've been in Des Moines one year or one season, so you have a, a little bit of an idea. What are some of your favorite things to do when you weren't focusing on practice or or training? What are the, some of the favorite things you had to do in the Des Moines area? Man, um, you know, I like to go fishing a lot of the times. Uh, kind of just clear the headspace and, uh, I don't know, um, get away from football itself. Um, and that's kind of just like my, my happy place, I would say. Um, couldn't do much hunting out there just because of time limits uh, with football and um, the dedication that we have to have towards football. So, um, and then besides that, you know, just hanging out with the guys, um, building that team camaraderie. Did you did you go hunting at all? I feel like you got invited to go to some weird hunting. I don't remember if you actually went. <laughs> did you do that? Did you go hunting at all? Um, you know, we're supposed to keep that under the radar, but uh, yeah, okay. yeah. <laughs> all right, so you did some, you did some maybe possibly illegal hunting. That we'll edit that part out. Yeah, uh, <laughs> please do. <laughs> let's uh. Let's talk a little bit about, you know, everybody, when you reach a level like you have, you've had a lot of success. You had a lot of success in college at the College of Idaho, and you had a little bit of spell in the CFL. I think if you didn't get hurt, you probably would have would have stuck there. You come here, you had tremendous success, I thought. You, know, you passed for over 2,000 yards. You ran for 900 yards. But there are some people in Des Moines that wish that you were six foot four and 220 pounds and looked like that prototypical NFL quarterback and maybe wish we had a different guy back there. Um, they can't see past the fact that you did produce a lot of results. So what do you say to people that possibly wish we had a different quarterback or wish you were a different size guy? What are your thoughts or what do you say to those people? You know, I've gotten that my whole life. Um, so I'm used to the naysayers and the haters. Um, you know, I just let my game speak for itself. Um, that's all I can do. Um, you know, if they if they truly want a 6'4 quarterback, then they can go be a fan of another team. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm here for the Barnstormers, and they better be here to support me as well. All right. So we, we did have a, a couple fan questions that were kind of – looked like we had one really that was kind of portrayed to you. But Connor Hickman – 
has wanted to know if you – what are your thoughts on the, on Tulsa? Our home opener, we start in the row with three games, then we have a bye week. Our home opener is Tulsa. Tulsa is an expansion team, but a coach who's kind of been around this level for a little bit, who's with the Omaha Beef the last couple of years in the CIF, was with the Cedar Rapids <laughs> Titans in the IFL before that. Uh, what are your thoughts on Tulsa? Are you familiar with Coach Jones in any way? That was the question that, that was asked uh, on our social media. I can't say I am familiar with him, um, but I do know that you can't take any team in this league lightly. And so um, preparing for Tulsa and to every opponent we go against um, to the fullest capability is going to be a big factor to our success. All right. La- last question before we let you go and get back to whatever it is you're going to do on a Monday night in, in California. What <laughs> would you say to somebody who's kind of deciding whether they want to come to a Barn Summers game? or deciding whether they want to buy a season ticket package, what would your sales pitch on why it would be an awesome experience for them to do that? Man, the game is just so fast paced and so action packed. Um, There's so much going on that you'll definitely get your money's worth. And um, I would just say, do it. Um, You'll, you won't regret it and uh, you'll be in for a treat. Awesome. Darius, appreciate your time. We will see you here in Des Moines in just a couple of weeks. Our report date is March 5th, so just about two and a half weeks away. We'll get you back in Des Moines and get you out and about and get ready to play that first <laughs> in Las Vegas on the 25th. All right, appreciate you, Darius. Talk to you soon. I'm excited. Thank you, man. All right, Darius James Peterson, our quarterback. Rui, what was your first impression last year when you are like, this guy's the quarterback, Darius James Peterson. First of all, he, did you expect him to look how he did, or did you expect no, something? No. <laughs> uh, no, but he fit like the movie protocol, like a quarterback. You know, he had like the, the long hair. He had just a mustache, clean shade. He got the plane, obviously. Uh, Coach Boots went to pick him up because he didn't have his truck in. Um, and I was, I didn't know it was him in the parking lot. I was emptying my car because we got here the same day. And I see him and I'm like, he had a suitcase. I'm like, no way. I'm like, is this, you know, it just, you know, like the whole thing about the hype and all that, you know, that's everybody, you know, everybody wants something. If we had someone six, four, two, two, whatever, they're too slow or something, you know, everybody's going to have something they don't like about whoever's there. Um, but no, he, um, I was not expecting him to look like that, but I mean, he came about and, you know, he did his job to the best of his ability and it was, it was good enough for us most of the time. So there was seriously nothing weird about living with Darius, like nothing crazy. He doesn't snore a lot, or he's no. We have our your apartment was always doors closed. Clean. It's not all of our apartments are always clean. Let's put that out there. Your guys's was clean whenever I came through, so I can at least say that he was for sure clean. Uh, yeah, so no, we're we're here. definitely we're know clean that. over here. No, nothing too crazy. Excellent. So let's talk. We had a couple other questions. You know, one question we're going to save for uh, the next segment. We kind of go go into my breakdown, but. Uh, one question from Kenny Hay underneath our, our Facebook post when we when we put this out was, um, with the XFL coming back, does that hurt us at all? And I, he said the AFL, I think he meant the IFL. Uh, does the XFL coming back hurt us at all? Um, I don't think that, you know, I'll get your opinion in a second. I don't think that hurts us. You know, we do have a, a partnership between the, the XFL and the IFL. Um, so there's uh, some exchanging of players, some exchanging of players' information. Uh, what's supposed to happen is our guys are, are going to be looked at now. The XFL gets going next week. Uh, by the time this this airs, the XFL first game will be this upcoming weekend. So we will mm-hmm. uh, see how that goes. But the way it's supposed to work now is if they need guys and guys get injured and they need to bring somebody in, they should be looking at our rosters in our season here for that overlap of like eight weeks. Uh, so I, I don't right. think it hurts us at all. It should be a benefit to us to help continue to elevate the IFL as the premier league. But what are your thoughts on, on the XFL and the partnership and all that stuff? Uh, I agree with you. What you said at the end there, it's definitely just going to elevate our league. If anything, um, I think it's huge for us as players. Um, I think everybody knows that why we are very grateful for the opportunity and, um, you know, thankful to you and the, in the, in the organization for looking in our way in the first place to come here and play, which is definitely an honor. Um, you know, our goal is to get back outdoors. Um, I think that's just, I think it should be known. If it isn't, now you know, um, that's how the players, we look, you know. Um, if the opportunity is right, you know, you're going to you're gonna go. Um, 
I think it helps us in a way that it should have helped us the whole way along because now you have that, well, if I'm playing, playing really, really good, like the whole time, you know, they can see me, which should have been like that all the time. Um, but no, I think it's going to be more beneficial than anything to uh, to the league. Um, I guess we'll just have to see it unfold, you know, this year coming up. Yeah, definitely. So it'll be, it's all brand new. We'll see how it goes. You know, I, I for one, am right. excited. But a lot of sharing of information about players. So lists of players, guys that were scouted with all their contact info. Um, we recently had a little draft where uh, last Friday where all the IFL teams were able to grab the right, the, the IFL rights of some guys who were just cut. So we have 10 guys that we have exclusive negotiating rights with. Uh, for the IFL until the XFL is over, guys that were released. doesn't mean they're going to come here. doesn't mean anything like that, but we have the rights to talk to them and no other IFL team can talk to them. So everybody's able to grab 10 guys in that aspect. And it'll just be cool to kind of kind of see how it goes. Yeah, I'm, in, I'm interested to see. All right, so let's move forward. You know, we had Darius Finals, great. Let's go to, to our next segment. we got two segments left, then we'll wrap it up. The next segment, we're going to kind of center this around Jeff Pingle's question about our run game. So – uh, every every time we have an episode, I'm going to try to give some kind of breakdown in the football aspect of the game, of the indoor game, maybe how it's different from the outdoor game, just to give our fans a little bit of insight into you know, what the game is like and why we do things that we do. So, you know, this week we're going to talk a little bit about our run game. We're going to let Lou, Rui kind of step to the side for a couple of minutes, but we're going to go through a couple of plays in our run game, show you some film here and, and give you an idea of, of why we do what we do in certain plays. So Jeff's question was, last year we had a lot of running game with pulling, like trying to stretch the field horizontally. He's asking if we're going to go north and south. So I'm going to give you a couple of examples here of how plays that we run can have different avenues of attack depending on what the defense does. <clears throat> All right, guys. So here we're getting into our first play of our breakdown here. We're going to break down three different styles of run game stuff for us. And this is what's called an RPO in us. And a lot of our stuff, we tag RPOs to it. That's run pass options. So this play is really a triple option play. It gives us the opportunity to have Darius, our quarterback, keep the ball and run. Uh, Antonio Wimbush is the running back here. So he has the opportunity to take this ball and really hit any of the holes that open up, there's not really a designed hole for this one. Uh, he's going to kind of see where the defense goes and kind of feel for a hole. But we also are going to try to take advantage of this middle linebacker here because they play a, a middle of the field open. So for us, that means that there's no free safety out here. Okay, so because of that, we leave that spot open. We're gonna read this middle linebacker. We're not gonna block him, all right? So we're gonna send guys out to block out here in this area. We're gonna send Antonio up here. We're gonna block these three guys with our three offensive linemen. And we're gonna leave him. If he stays back and backs up this way, Darius should give the ball to Antonio and he should be able to make a nice gain with that guy in the hole. If this guy comes down and plays the run hard, we're going to sneak him right behind there, and Darius is going to pop his hips and throw the ball. So it gives us three different options. And as you look at this play out, you know, pause it right here. He comes forward fast. So that guy's coming forward. This guy's coming forward right now, and Darius sees that right away. So at this point, you know, Darius is probably thinking, let me see what happens with this receiver, because I'm going to probably try to pop that over his head. And in film study, we kind of expected that with, with this Bismarck team. So as you come through, see Darius pop those hips really quick again and kind of come back to that. If we go back on this play a little bit to the beginning here. So you see how fast he pops his hips. So, and Darius is coming through. That guy comes forward. We pop our hips here. 
and throw that right over his head. And we just get down to the one yard line there. So that's uh, just an example of an RPO type play that gives us three different options. You know, had that guy played deeper, we would have given the ball to Antonio and I'm sure he would have made a good play because he would have kind of a wide open space there. But next one, we're gonna look at a little play here from a game against Massachusetts. It's a game we beat them in. Uh, this is gonna be kind of an outside play. There's no pulling on it, but it's an outside. It's kind of close to what a power play would be for an outside, if you guys are familiar with power uh, pulling guards. You know, we don't have a, a puller on this, but what's gonna happen is, if I mark this up for you quick, what's gonna happen is, is the running back, who again is, is Antonio Wimbush here, he's gonna run this way and look to kind of go up the wall here, or the numbers, if he gets the ball. Okay, we're gonna block inside. We're gonna block, we're gonna block here, get him blocked up. These two guys are gonna double team there to him and try to get that blocked up. And we're gonna leave, we're gonna leave this guy right here. That guy, we're gonna leave him alone and not block him, and I'll explain to you why in a second. So we're not gonna block him. We're gonna ask these wide outs to go in here and block inside a little bit as well. But we're gonna run him this way, then Darius is gonna take a couple shuffle steps and read that guy. And if that guy goes out, as he shuffles and Antonio crosses his face, if that guy goes out this way to take Antonio, Darius is gonna shoot up inside of there and keep the ball. And you guys probably remember seeing this play often, okay? And if he, if he tries to stay home here or squeeze behind this left guard and try to tackle Darius, then Antonio will get the ball and he'll go up that way. Uh, we, don't, we don't have an RPO tag to this one. We could have a little RPO tag to it as well uh, with maybe a route from this guy, something we like is some little route right there. All right, or maybe something off the wall for him if we had RPO, but we don't have an RPO tag for this guy. Uh, so it's really just a two-way option. Either Antonio is going to get the ball going that way or Darius is going to get the ball going that way. Uh, let's see how this one plays out here. We'll go ahead and play it forward for you. So right there, you see that guy right away, if I back it up a little bit, that guy right away, he's going for Antonio. He is... You know, look at his path. He's going out there. He doesn't want Antonio to get the ball. Okay, Antonio had a big game against these guys. I think he had over 100 yards. So they were keying on him. This is late in the fourth quarter. Uh, we're driving. We're, we're in the lead. We're driving to kind of seal the game. But one more score here kind of seals the game. And, and he's going for Antonio right away. So Darius is right now going to maintain his what would eventually kind of be like a fake because he knows he's going to pull this. He's going to maintain that. And then he's going to pull the ball. So let's go back it up a little bit. Go back to the start of the play. Uh, our Darius Stewart there in the backfield, he's just going to do a little goofy motion, try to throw defense off a little bit. He's coming across. We get that guy out, and then boom, there goes Darius. You know, we sent both those receivers inside. Okay, so we sent the receivers inside. We got a nice seal blocking here. Again, we're nursing a, a short lead, so we want to be a little bit safe with the ball. So Darius is just trying to get the yards that we can, but you can see the huge amount that opened up here. If I, if I mark it up for you again, you know, that's the, that's the guy we didn't block. He went out and tackled the Antonio, which is great. We got that right guard. He's got a nice block here and this guy, easy block. The play is going away. It's a simple block. Okay. And we got a really nice double team. That's the nose guard. Okay. And the nose guard's face is facing that way. All right. That's not what he looked like when he lined up. So that's a great double team. All right. Really nice job on that one. And then we got a nice angle here for Darius just to kind of go up in that aspect there. So uh, let's let, let's play this back from the beginning, let you guys play it out and see how this run play for us called. We knew it was going to attack to the left, but we didn't really know until it dictated whether it was going to be a sweep type play to the left or it was going to be Darius keeping the ball up the middle. And we'll show it to you here again so you can get an idea of that. There's the guy keeping. There's Darius. He's going to be smart about it and kind of just go down, take the yards because of the timing. You know, and the third one. We're going to talk a little bit about this play. Uh, this is our Tucson game from 2022. We ran the ball really, really effectively against these guys. Uh, this was a play that we knew from film study. So I can give you a little idea into film study and what we do for the film study aspect. Um, but we knew that there was a hole 
in the Tucson defense based on this formation. So to mark this up here for you, we went to three receivers on one side. One, two, three receivers over there. No receivers this on this side of the ball with the running back and the quarterback in the backfield. Okay, so that formation, we knew when we, when they, when we did that formation, they were going to then come out with an extra guy over here. They're going to take their free safety, walk him down, and they'll go one, two, three to match us, keep their middle linebacker there. And this is their corner. Now, mind you, he has nobody in front of him, right? What he's going to do is he's going to replace the free safety, but they're trying, they were trying to be sneaky about it. He's going to slow play back here and become the free safety. Okay, which is a in, in the pass game, it's a sound defense. There's not a lot of threat over here in pass game. He's looking to see what threats are we crossing this guy or crossing that guy. The only thing coming out in the pass game over there would be maybe the running back out in the flats or something. And he could he could see that and come down on it. So from a pass game perspective, very sound defense. I understand why they did it. But what we noticed in the run game is this guy was very, very, very worried about getting back. So when the quarterback started his cadence on film against other teams, he would start inching back, inching back, and his eyes are looking that way. Okay, he's trying to see what the receivers are doing. Can he get a head start on whatever route he's got to help cover over there? Okay, so we knew that we'd have one opportunity where we could bust a huge gain with what we call an inside zone play. We have a different name for it. I'm not going to give you the, all the details here, but it's an inside zone play. And an inside zone play just to talk about that quick, is it's a kind of a two-way go play. So the running back is going to come here and kind of come up the middle, and he can have his choice of any of the of the gaps. So he can have this gap out here and bust it out that way if that's where the hole is. He can go between the left guard and the center. He can go between the right guard and the center. Or he can go way out, way all the way outside back here. Okay, so there's, there's a natural, you know, four gaps that the defense has to, has to play. Um, and we knew that also what Tucson does is they don't want the quarterback running wild. You know, teams respected Darius a lot. So what we anticipated is we're going to leave this guy unblocked. We're not going to block him. And we anticipated him playing wide. And what that would do is create yet another gap. And you'll see that here in a second. It'll create an extra gap because he's so wide to make sure Darius doesn't get the ball. So we thought if we can get a good block on this nose – a hard double team between the center and the right guard. Okay, if we can get a huge block on that nose, this guy's going to be so wide that we can hit this thing, cut it back, and he's going to be so worried about what's happening over there that we can get a long game. And we knew we could only do it once because once we do it, they're going to come off the field. They're going to see it. Uh, coach Wooten's a good coach. He was calling the defense for Tucson at this time. He's going to coach this guy up and say, hey, you've got to stay home until we make sure it's a pass before you leak back. Okay, so we knew we could do it once. This is third quarter. It's a back-and-forth game. This is, I think, really the play that helped blow it open. Uh, gave us a two-score lead because of this. And we just driven down the field a little bit. Nice little drive. It was a second and short. Second and short's a, you know, second and medium, excuse me. Uh, defense is probably expecting us to try to get to a third and short. So for us to run an inside zone, uh, expecting the Mike linebacker to come barreling down really hard and kind of take himself out of the mix just because he expected us to do that. So let's see how this one plays out. Play it forward here for you. All right, Cadence is going. And see how he's leaking out right there? So already this, this cat right here is already leaking. Look where his head is. His head is looking that way to see what's coming. He doesn't even know what's happening. He doesn't know the ball's been snapped because he's very worried about getting back here and not getting beat on some kind of deep combination route. All right, so let's go back here. Let's play this one from the beginning so you can kind of see it here. Let's see how this plays out. So we're here. He starts bailing out. There he goes. He's gone. We just, we look, look where we're at here. Okay, this guy has no idea what's going on. Zero. He doesn't know what the heck's happening. We have our, our inside zone happening right here, okay? So Darius riding this guy. He's, Darius is making sure that guy's not a factor. We got kind of a mess here. You know, they're playing it really hard up front. They're coming hard, coming hard, coming hard outside. We get that double team. 
Solid double team here. That's the center and the guard on the nose tackle. Solid double team. And then as you'll see here, that creates that backside cut. Okay. And then look where we have to go. All right. So that was our breakdown. Get you an idea of what, you know, those couple of run plays are a little bit of an RPO action, run pass option that we talked about and gives you an idea of, of why we do certain things we do. So sometimes when we, when we run the ball outside, it could have been a run to the inside. It could have been a pass. It just all depends on what the defense does, but uh, that's kind of, kind of, not in your category, Rui. We don't do a lot of running when you're on the field or throwing up the ball. So uh, let's talk a little bit more about Rui. Uh, one one segment we're going to do every episode, too, is called Rui in the Community. So we're going to get Rui out to different partners that we have, and we're going to get you out to do a lot of different things here around town. But let's talk a little bit about what you did this last weekend. So tell us about what you did. I think I can find a picture here to post when we, when we post this up. But what did you do last weekend here in Des Moines? Yeah. In a uh, red flannel run that the YMCA of Greater Des Moines puts on every year, it's like their uh, fundraiser uh, since they're a nonprofit and stuff. There's no uh, certain like cause that they do it for, other than like I said, it's a fundraiser for them to raise money since um, they don't bring any in at all. All right, so that's Barnstormers episode one, guys. You know, we had Rui here as co-host, and we got our interview with Darius James Peters was awesome. Uh, we'll try to get Darius on some more as the season progresses. We can talk a little more football, a little less, uh, you know, kind of background here. We're still a little bit away from camp, a few weeks away, so we didn't get too much into football with Darius, but we'll be able to do that. I hope you enjoyed, you know, learn a little bit more about Rui and the community. We'll get him out there. We'll get some kind of remote stuff and do some of our live stuff uh, via that. Uh, we'll see what we do for, for next episode. And I hope you enjoyed the breakdown about our run game. So that's something that I hope that can allow you to have a better understanding of why we do certain things and how sometimes, you know, we do stuff that's dictated a little bit about, by the defense. You know, you always hear, at least I always heard as a kid, you know, watching a, a, a Bears game growing up in Chicago and it's third and eight and the quarterback throws a three-yard pass and my dad gets all upset on why, why is he throwing a three-yard pass on third and eight? You know, sometimes it's not always what you want to do, but the defense dictates what you have to do. And I know in a scenario like that, they dropped everybody deep. You're hoping the guy catches it for three yards and runs for the other five uh, based on what happens. So, you know, there's it's not always simply us calling a play that makes that happen. Sometimes it's us calling a play that has multiple options. Oftentimes it's us calling a play with multiple options. And we, we, we sometimes have to take what's there from the defense and hope that guys can make a play. You know, if you look at, at our big plays last year, a lot of them were just wide receivers or running backs offensively just making a play or a defensive back just making a play on a ball. It wasn't a bad throw by the other team. They just made a play. So, you know, it's it's exciting. And to kind of give you guys a little in-depth each week on something offensively or defensively or even into the special teams uh, to, to get an idea of why we do what we do. Uh, next episode, we're going to have another guest. Our returning linebacker, Ian McBurrow. So if you're listening to this, wherever you're listening to it, whether it's Twitter, whether it's our IG, whether it's our Facebook, or on our, you know any of those those platforms, uh, drop any questions you want us to ask Ian. You know, we're going to have Ian on and, and get a little, you know, again, background on, on Ian, where he's from. He's out in Baltimore right now. That's where he's from. So we'll get an idea of, of what he's about. Won't be probably very super specific to, to the season and, and, and football stuff, but as we progress, we'll, we'll have Ian on again and talk about that. But hope you guys enjoyed this first episode of, of Barnstormer with Coach, Mo, Coach Mogensen, and we look forward to seeing you for episode two uh, when, we, when we get that going on here in a week or two. Go Barnstormers. Went to a game just the other night.